Father, that your blessing would rest upon our meeting and upon each council member. May wisdom be given to each one as they deal with the decisions that render to the citizens of Fresno. May your grace abound in each of their lives, and may the mercy of our Lord be upon each of us, and as we look for your blessings upon our city. Father, we have many pressing problems, and upon these shoulders, we look to you that you would give wisdom and decisions that may be made that may be made that would be far-reaching and blessing to this town and to continue the heritage that we have. We ask for that wisdom, we ask for your favor, and we ask your blessings upon our city in the name of our wonderful Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States. All right. Thank you, Pastor. We have no ceremonial presentations this morning, which I think is a first for a long time. So we're on to the approval of some minutes from previous meetings. Um, uh, first, the approval of council minutes from October 9th, 2014. Madam Clerk, were there any changes to those? Uh, actually, there were. Uh, actually, it's one change, which um, was corrected to reflect Council Member Capriolio as a presenter for Te Yokimoto Day. Oh, okay. So with that correction, do I have a motion to approve those minutes? Sec can I have a second to approve those minutes? Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Motion passed 6-0. Now the approval of successor agency minutes from October 9th, 2014. Madam Clerk, were there any changes to those minutes? No changes. Do I have a motion to approve those minutes? So All right. All in favor? Aye. Motion passes 6 0. <clears throat> okay. All right. Madam Clerk, we want to go back to um, the minutes of October 9th, and okay. Councilman Capriolio has a I believe that that day the uh, invocation was by Pastor Lemons as opposed to uh, the one entered in the minutes. Did we correct that or do we bring that up to your attention? I, I don't think that was brought to our attention. Okay. Who was here today? Okay. Uh, well, apparently we'll double check on that and correct it if necessary. Okay, perfect. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, now we are on to council member reports and comments. Any council members have anything that they'd like to mention? Councilman Quintero. Okay, Councilman Brand. Announced that on uh, early this week we opened um, the ceremony to the widening of knees and Willow Avenue, which for many years has been a bottleneck. Anybody lived in that area knows about it. I wanted to thank Scott Mosier, uh, Mark Sandra for setting it up, and all the city staff. We're finally, uh, you know, this multi-jurisdictional city, county, state, Caltrans, a lot of people involved. But uh, in the end, we finally got it together. So it'll be, a, you know, a long project. But in the end, it'll also um, widen Willow Avenue too. Thank you. All right, you want to wait for Bruce? No. Okay, Councilman Quintero. Yeah. Uh, Assistant City Manager, can you please uh, give me an update on what's going on with the uh, the uh, Armenian Town project? It's just sat there and sat there, and I've had a couple calls on it. As folks might be interested. Sure, I can I can make sure that we get you a, a full report um, out within the next um, thirty days. But um, it, is, it is sort of wrapped into the process with the successor agency and what we're doing with the, the real property related to that process. Um, and so once, once we kind of iron out some of those details, I'll be able to provide you with a report on that. Okay. When you uh, 
send us the updated report. Can we also uh, get some information in terms of uh, of what's left in the process of folks that, uh, I mean, if it's not going to happen, of folks that uh, that may be interested in the property, if, uh, if uh, you know, who would they contact and that type of thing? I, yeah, Absolutely. I've, got, I've gotten a couple calls on that, so. Okay. And I don't know if it's still going forward or not with the one group that, had been there initially. Right. Well, and, and we have to make sure that, that that process exhausts itself before we can move on to the next step. So that's sort of where we're at in the transition right now. Okay. And then also where, where, uh, where it's at with a, <clears throat> with a successor agency and then, and then what's left, uh, you know, what would be the next steps or, or how that works as well. Okay. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, Thank Mr. You. President. Councilman Olivier. Thank you, Council President. And with your uh, permission today, we'd like to request that this body adjourn in memory of Mr. Earl Smithcamp, who passed away earlier this week. Uh, we'll be um, circulating a, um, a certificate to be signed by the members. Uh, Mr. Smithcamp passed away at age 96. Uh, he was an entrepreneur that started as a milkman and uh, <clears throat> worked his way up, um, finally founded Wawona Frozen Foods and employs hundreds of people in our valley. and. Um, it's a great loss to our community, so request that we can <clears throat> adjourn in, mem in, his, in his memory today. Absolutely. Thank you. Councilman Zhang. Thank you. Uh, Renee, just to thank the staff, they had, they had a community meeting um, over in the district um, just to let them know about the Clinton overpass with Caltrans, and I know that we had staff participate, but also Caltrans did, and uh, did a great job. It was um, a tough, um, I think, making sure that they understand what the closure means, but it was very difficult and they, they went through it perfectly well. So I just want to make sure that we thank those that showed up also with Caltrans who did a great job, okay? Uh, the other one is I want to make sure I invite <clears throat> everyone. Um, this weekend, uh, Council President and myself will be hosting uh, an event at Donna Jachansi, Make a Difference Day. This is my fifth year and, and I'm glad this year that uh, the Council President will be coming along we're uh, expecting about 5,000 folks uh, will we'll be down there. Everything's provided free uh, to all the participants. Um, but uh, most importantly, there'll be about 1,200 uh, young youth soccer players playing in our stadium. Uh, and so I just want to make sure I um, invite everyone, but also thank all the volunteers, uh, the incredible work that, that put this together. So I'm um, looking forward to, for this weekend, Council President. Absolutely. Councilman Capriolio. I just wanted to... Uh, uh, indicate that we had a wonderful time at the veterans home uh, their one-year anniversary was this week and uh, it was well attended and uh, it was a great event and uh, we owe a lot to those veterans and I think that was shown to them how important they are to our lives and to uh, from our past to our future as well so it was a great event and uh, appreciate everybody being there that was really really great and I would also like to recognize uh, yesterday we went to a hundred year anniversary for Harris Construction, Mr. and Mrs. Spencer have been operating wonderfully within our community and throughout the valley for a hundred years. Not them particularly, but they've taken it over and done a great job. And so employing a lot of people and accomplishing quite a bit in our community. So we want to congratulate them on a hundred years. All right, the screen is clear. We're on to the um, approval of today's agenda. Madam Clerk, have there been any changes to today's agenda? Yes, there's several changes. <clears throat> the first one is the 1030 item number one. It's going to be continued to November the 6th. The next change is the 1.30 p.m. closed session has been changed to 11.30, and it's been posted as a special session, uh, special closed session meeting. So that'll be at 11.30 instead of 1.30. The 255 appearance from a, a citizen to speak on scheduled communication has been removed from the agenda by the citizen and it will be rescheduled sometime in the future. And the 3 p.m. workshop has been removed from the agenda by uh, the BC, BHC, the folks who were doing the workshop. They, can't, they um, removed that from the agenda due to a conflict. All right, thank you. <clears throat> and then, are there council members, have there been any changes or requests for change? Uh, yes, I'd like to pull item, uh, the 1030 item and continue that for two weeks as well. The 1030 number two? Correct. Number one. Oh, number one is the one that I think uh, the clerk just mentioned. So okay. number one's been pulled already. Perfect, thank you. All right, all right cool. 
Um, yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Continue to a different day. All right, then, with these changes, do I have a motion to accept today's agenda? So moved. And a second? Yeah. And a second? All in favor? Aye. Motion passes 7 0. Now, on to today's consent calendar. Um, I'd like to first ask if council has any changes on today's consent calendar? Yes, Councilman Brand. City Attorney, item 1C on the consent calendar. Um, I'm going to recuse myself on that item, so do I just do that now publicly, and when I vote, do I make a notation? No, that's fine. Just state that you're not participating in that okay, item. Okay, for the record, I'm recusing myself on item 1C. Right. Council members, anything else with the consent calendar? All right, then I'm going to go out to the public. And if there's any members of the public that would like to address anything on the consent calendar, any of those items specifically, if you'd approach the microphone, please. All right, it doesn't look like we have any this morning. So with that recognition of Councilman Brand's recusal, do I have a motion to adopt today's consent calendar? And a second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion passes 7-0. All right. We, have, we didn't have any contested items then. We're on to general admin. And general admin item 2A, ID 14-428, authorize the chief of police to renew a multi-year agreement with Hub Systems. And that's from our police department. Doesn't seem like we have anybody from our police department here. Should we postpone this and come back to it? <laughs> Madam Clerk, can we do that? Just see if, the, if police show up in the next, okay. All right, we'll move to item 2B. That's ID 14-469, actions related to updating the nexus studies for citywide development impact fees. And that's our Public Works Department. Good morning, uh, Council President Brandau and members of the Council. I'm Andrew Benelli with the Public Works Department. We are recommending today that you approve a contract agreement with Economic Planning Systems to update our Development Impact Fee Nexus study. Uh, it's been several years, and it uh, needs to be updated to look at improvements that have been made in the last five years and also to address some of the changes in the general plan. Uh, we do collect fees for police, fire, parks, uh, streets, both regional and new growth area streets, and also traffic signals. Those are the fees that will be reviewed. They'll also be conducting a comparison to some of the other communities in the area. Uh, we've already had one workshop with the stakeholders, but we're intending to have several more. The stakeholder group includes uh, uh, developers that build residential housing subdivisions, also industrial and commercial developers, and uh, uh, that group was very supportive of going forward with a new study. Uh, we're also asking you to approve a, uh, a resolution to uh, allocate the funds to pay for the nexus fee, and that's not coming from the general fund. It's all uh, funds that are generated by fees that are collected now. So if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Thank you, Andrew. We'll go out to the public first and then come back up to council. Any members of the public like to address this item? All right, then back up at Council. Councilman Brand. Uh, was it 2005 when the last uh, impact fee was done? Was it? Uh, I believe. I believe that's the, the last. I know S Scott and I talked about this la early last year. I, is that correct, Scott? Oh, good morning. Good morning, Council. Uh, so with respect to the different impact fees, uh, let's see, traffic signals was most recently updated mm -hmm. in uh, 2008. Mm -hmm. uh, we'd actually gotten ready to go in 2010 uh, with a minor update, and that was the time we were dealing with uh, uh, building and safety and planning processing fees, so that was put on hold for a bit. Uh, major streets was 2007, um, and then the police, fire, and parks was 2005. Right. Okay, and 
originally on just going a little history back in UGM was supposed to do it up, updated one, I think once a year but that but it took about 20 or 30 years in between so in the future are we going to do this more often is that the plan we will be doing it more often in the future okay because yeah. I know in the service levels that were identified in the 2005 study the police for example was I think was like 1.8 1.9 you know per per thousand people uh, the parks, fire, all those standards, I read to those uh, during that infill uh, review, and we're all totally different than what we're actually implementing today. So it would make a, a substantial difference, hopefully, if it recognizes the actual service levels. And EPS, they, they did the uh, work on the 2000 general, 2035 general plan, and in the, in the, in these guys, I'm very impressed with uh, their work, very uh, thorough. Uh, the software modeling they use, I think, is pretty precise. Um, are we considering, as we do this, uh, either a person, uh, like any kind of tiered basis, there's going to be the same one-size-fits-all as far as impact fees? No, we don't really have one-size-fits-all now. The mm -hmm. infill projects don't pay the new growth area streets fees. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we're going to be looking at that, considering that maybe the police and fire sheet fees should also be reduced in the infill right. projects. Uh, uh, and, and also some of the other considerations. You know, the, the impacts from an infill project are not as significant as the impacts from uh, new homes or commercial in the new growth area. So we'll really be looking at every, they, they still need to pay their own way. There are some impacts, mm -hmm. but they're substantially reduced. Okay, so because I know now there's a fixed fee for capital costs for police, future police and fire substations. So. If it's a development, let's say within South District that's existing, there's probably already a you know station there. Where, let's say it's on the area west of 99, where there's not, then to me there's got to be a you know a, a balance that recognizes that one is already in place and one, of course, would have to come. Um, the other thing is I know now some of the fees are like you know per unit, like a thousand dollars per door, or you know for park fees and for uh, public safety fees. No, in general. And I think they should be more precise, like per square foot. For example, if you had 100 apartment units that were all studios, 500 square feet, you'd pay, let's say, $1,000 times, times 100. If you built 100 units that were all 1,000 square feet with maybe more residents because you've got probably three or four people in the household, it's the same cost. So if the fees is assessed by the square foot, then it's more precise in measuring the actual impact. So it's something I'd like to see looked at as we go. And then in the final comment on, as we move forward on this and other things, is this on the CFD models that were, we incorporate almost all new commercial and residential development. I know, I know the, um, uh, the Fancher Creek is on the CFD model that we, uh, that's our future. That answers the question if it's done right. This future, de this new development pay for itself. So I'll make a motion that we approve this item. And then, and again, is it, Scott, or is it the timeline every other year, every three years? What's the timeline for the future for future reevaluations? Oh, Council, there's probably, there's, we found a need to uh, update things like the traffic related fees more often because um, on things like major streets and traffic signals, uh, those are primarily developer reimbursement programs. Mm -hmm. So as things change in the program, as developers build certain streets, as the costs changed up and down, uh, actually, for example, City of Clovis doesn't update every year. Um, mm -hmm. And we've, we've recommended that. Uh, oftentimes, it's a bit challenging. There will be other, other fees or cost or considerations, and there's that sense of, well, is it a good time uh, mm -hmm. to look at that? But uh, we're... Certainly, I'm an advocate for just minor incremental adjustments of those. Uh, for things like police, fire, and parks, those should be at least every five years uh, yeah. per uh, state law, right. uh, but perhaps on maybe a three-year, two- to three-year basis. Yeah. And just one, one final comment that's directly related. When I did that, and Scott was there, we did the, the, the widening project for Knees and Willows. All over the city of Fresno for the past 50 years, you'll see one developer take a corner like a chestnut and knees, go about 300 feet, curbs, gutters, and it stops. And then the next 10 years, it or 20 or 30 years, it takes to eventually fill it out. So maybe, I realize you can't force people to build out, but we can maybe think of solutions in the future to, to better transition in those kind of developments so the public doesn't have the uh, you know, bottleneck, open bottleneck type of situation. 
Absolutely, and uh, there have been a number of cases where if it's only one or two lots that, it, that would be the bottleneck, then the developers have been required to do that. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, the street fees the council adopted back in 2007 actually allow for a reimbursement of those types of items. Um, right. Good case even in uh, northeast Fresno. Uh, there's a Bonadelli development up at Chestnut and International near Clovis North, and uh, their requirement was actually to punch uh, Chestnut through all the way to Copper. And, got built into the fee program, they got credits, they got reimbursement, mm -hmm. and at the end of the day, everyone said, this is great, this is working well. Yeah, that's a, that's a good example, Scott. Anyway, thank you both, and again, again, make a motion to approve the item. Councilman Zhang. Thank you. Uh, Scott, just uh, quickly, I know we've done the fees, and my, I guess the question I usually always ask, uh, and you brought up a little bit, when, when you talk about the yearly increase or incremental or just the, the discussion of the fees, the question from the body has always been, is this the right time? And, um, you know, I, and I've been on record for many, for many times to say that when it's a good time, is it, is it the right time? And then I also hear when it's a bad time, is this the right time? And, and, and that has always been the challenge to, to the council body here. Let me know when it's the right time because you guys, we do these nexus, we do these fee studies and, um, it comes up here, then it's uh, the challenge is when, when, when is that getting impl implemented? So I would like to see somewhere in there in terms of when the study is done, what percentage, percentages do we have that are accepted up here as recommendations and then have a larger context in terms of the impacts if we don't or, or those that aren't uh, in, in that discussion. And I, and I don't know if that's possible, but I think, I think that would be helpful to not only uh, the electors, but also to, to, to our taxpayers out there. Uh, you, you know, what, what we do, because we, we're spending what, I don't know how much for the fee study, it's two, almost $250,000 here to do this study, to come out to give us kind of a baseline as to what we think we need to be able to improve our quality of life or our city and all those things. And then to have those studies presented to us and say, well, only 10% is accepted or 15% is accepted and maybe not in that way. All those things impact the type of level services that we can do and we provide. And so for me, I would like to, to see that somehow that, that those translate into something that's meaningful but also easy, easily for the, the electeds to understand but also for our constituents to understand when we don't implement the recommendation or the study that we ask our staff to do. Okay, So that that's my... Uh, thought on, on this particular issue. And as uh, Mr. Benelli had shared, uh, there will be an extensive uh, stakeholder process, and through that, you know, we, we've already, even in the first meeting, uh, received different requests, things for consideration. Just for example, uh, the, uh, the residential home builders have, have suggested it'd be a really great idea to capture the median landscaping in the cost of our street fees. Right now we don't give any reimbursements or credits not built into the fee. Just as people go in and develop, you, you're required to put in the landscaping and, that, and that's it. And they'd like you know, some credit or compensation. Because we have other people who come in and develop later and they get, a, they get in essence a free ride on the landscaping because someone else came in first. So there, and there will be many, many items uh, like that um, already our uh, city manager and Mr. Prandini have had some discussion about, you know, for example, what is a park? Um, and so all of that will be captured, and as we uh, come back and provide uh, perhaps a workshop or through the, the ultimate, the hearings that the council would have, uh, we'll be providing that update and narrative about what, what were the issues, what were the recommendations, and certainly we can provide up, updates on those stakeholder workshops. Yeah, and I, and I think even when, when, when at the end of the day, uh, as I've said, and maybe I'll, I'll do it clear, once the recommendation, let's just say there's 10 recommendations, right, that, that staff said, these are the 10, this is based upon all the hearing that's been done, these are the things that we believe will bring us to, to a level where we can still provide services, whatever those may be. And the body up here says, we like your 10, but we're going to approve three, Right? That happens all the time. So what, what does approving those three means to, to, to the city, to our residents, to our business partners? Because it affects us, all of us, in terms of, you know, whether it's the bottleneck 
uh, or whether it's the fee for the, uh, you know, for uh, the parks or fire, you know, you guys may say, well, we, we want $100 per square foot. And, and this body comes up here and says, well, we, we've seen other cities says it should be $75. Okay, so we approved the $75. What, what does that mean? You know, what can we build? What, what, what does that translate to us? That's where I, I want it. Uh, I would like to see up here f for this body to really look at that. And it should be made clear that what, if we don't implement, what is the impact? Not just the, the initial study. We get the workshop. We get those. But what the outcome is and what, what has been accepted what hasn't. Because I'm pretty sure we've, those 2005 Nexus study, uh, you know, if, if those were presented to us, these were the recommendations, how many of those recommendations were accepted by the body? I would like to know. Absolutely. That, that makes sense. What are, okay. what are we getting, not getting? What are we planning for, not planning for? Right. Thanks. Councilman Quintero. Scott. Scott. <clears throat> you know, in, on reading the report, uh, I noticed on, under the local preferences that it wasn't applicable because it wasn't a competitive bid. So you just uh, selected a company that, that – uh, that can uh, fulfill the whatever we're requesting, the, the study? Uh, Council, when we refer to that local preference, it was not, so it was not subject to uh, the, the provision that said that a bidder uh, receives a discounted price uh, for the amount. Uh, that, that's applicable to um, equipment purchases. It's also c applicable right. to uh, construction projects. I'm familiar uh, with that. In this case, there is a city uh, local preference ordinance that speaks to if there are more than three uh, local firms that all submitted on this, then that would be that would be applicable if there are three that could perform that. In this case, that that was not the case. Um, the, the specialty of uh, preparing uh, development impact fee types of nexus studies, uh, that, that does not come up that often. So um, although there uh, are some local firms or people uh, who could be on the teams, uh, typically, I mean, these are all statewide uh, type, type of offices and operations. So there isn't one local firm in Fresno that can do all this work? There is not one that could that could do all of this work, or not one that put together a package and proposal and suggested that they could do everything. We we got people from uh, far and wide uh, who had submitted. We had a total of six uh, six teams uh, submit on this, and again the uh, the panel was composed of uh, police department, fire, uh, parks, and public works, and the recommendation was uh, unanimously for uh, EPS. Uh -huh. Then, uh, however, this company in, in Sacramento can uh, subcontract out to some of the local firms to do uh, parts of the study? Let me ask Andy to address that question. I know it's only 227000 but that's a good chunk of change to me. All six of the firms were from out of the area, but they all had a local consultant on their team. EPS does have a local consultant. It's Quadnoff on their team. Quadnoff will be doing a lot of the traffic work, some of the uh, local coordination. Uh, they'll also be involved in, in just a, a portion of the studies. So uh, they will be working on a lot of it. Like I said, all, of, all six of the firms had a local team member on, on a, uh, their proposal. Okay. That just, it just kind of continues to be a concern of mine because I just, you know, really prefer that we do the the most that we can to keep our dollars local that that we're spending and and uh i guess i want to ask the city attorney in in the local uh uh preference that we do or or um or you know the certain percentages that we ask for is there something that that uh or do we have already in in our ordinances or whatever that if we contract out with a uh with a firm outside of fresno that a certain percentage uh, that they, they should attempt to make a certain percentage of that contract uh, local? Uh, we don't have anything that currently covers that, and this is a consultant contract, and you don't choose one strictly on price, assuming that all are qualified. So it would be a little bit more difficult, but we could look into writing something into our code about consulting contracts and using local laborer firms. 
Well, I don't know how difficult it might be. You got about 30 pages of things they got to comply with in the ag agreement. So I, I would think that that might be in there too, you know, in the future or something that we can talk about it at least. Uh, you know, it's still, the economy still hasn't turned around. And like I said, it just continues to be, you know, a concern of mine to, to keep as much local as possible. And, uh, All right, we can get you some options on what we can do there. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right, uh, Councilman Quintero, thanks for asking those questions. I'm always, I always like to hear about local businesses getting as much work as they can. Andrew, great presentation. I, in there, you probably answer this, and I probably lost it already. Um, how long do we anticipate the study will take? Well, we think the study could be completed in six months, but because of the stakeholder meetings, there may be some changes or, or uh, requests for additional information from the stakeholders group. So it, I wouldn't be surprised if it takes over six months. You know, we'll, we'll complete our work within six months, and then depending on what the stakeholders ask for, uh, we won't bring it to you until we've reached an agreement with the stakeholders for something that's acceptable. So there may be some, you know, sometimes there's just some changes. So I would anticipate it would be back to this group maybe for a workshop in six months and then for a vote maybe in, in nine months or so. All right. Thank you very much. Just, just for the record, we're not going to wait to, to get an agreement uh, with the stakeholders. We will meet with the stakeholders if we believe that what we have come up with is fair and equitable. Um, we will present that to the council if the stakeholders don't necessarily agree with our recommendation. As we have gone through more than once when it comes to developer impact fees, I'm sure they'll show up and express to you their concerns about whatever it is that staff's recommending. But let me follow up with the comment made by Council Member Zhang. Those are the trade-offs, as we have in the past, when we start looking at impact fees, the council will be provided with some of the trade-offs that will occur if you decide to do something different than what staff is recommending. Staff will also provide that these are the fees you can collect, this is the outcome, or you can choose a different path, maybe a little bit less, and these are the outcomes. But you will be fully... Um, we will fully vet this issue with you uh, once we get this study back. And I would probably maybe even provide that information to you before we start meeting with the stakeholders so that you have the information at the same time the stakeholders do. And then we'll spend some time trying to see if we can get to a consensus. But if not, we'll always can bring it, we will bring it back to you with our recommendation. Thanks, Bruce. All right, then we have a motion. I can't remember if we had a second. We had a motion to approve from Councilman Brand. And we have a second from Councilman Quintero. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion passes 7-0. Thanks, Andrew. All right, now we're going to go back to general admin item 2A, now that Captain Reed's with us. Um, authorize the chief of police to renew a multi-year agreement with Hub Systems. So, Captain Reed. Good morning. Council President, members of council and staff. Apologize for being late. We had a personnel issue pop up. Um, the item before council today is a continuation of a contract for computer services with Hub LLC, which is a uh, software developer out of the Bay Area and uh, the Fresno Police Department. Hub provides the data 911 software that we use as uh, part of our field deployment sources. Um, it provides an integrated package. It's proprietary as well. So. 17 years ago, um, Data 911 came to Fresno PD and we developed this specific for the needs of the agency. We've been using it since. Uh, it provides the automated vehicle locator system that we use in each one of our patrol cars to better utilize resources in the field. Uh, computer assisted dispatch, which looks for the closest field unit to respond to a call. Our records management systems and our mobile report writing system, which again are all efficiency tools that we use in the field. Um, Again, these systems are proprietary, so the only people that can do the maintenance on this software system and provide the hardware needed for the new vehicles is Data 911. Um, the information also allows us to uh, meet the resourcing needs of the agency depending on hotspots based on our crime view system, and is going to be integrated into the real-time crime center as well, so it's an important portion of the effectiveness of that tool. 
This contract is for three years. It's 285000 per year for the service and maintenance of that software system. Um, it's for three years and would also allow for two additional years based on the performance of Data 911 and the acceptance by the City of Fresno. So that's basically in a nutshell what it does. Is there any questions? Captain Reed will go out to the uh, public first and then come back up to Council. Are there any public that would like to address this item? Ask a question? All right, then. Any council members? Screen is clear, so do I have a motion to approve? I have a motion and a second by Councilman Baines. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion passes 7-0. Thank you very much. Thank Again, you, I Captain apologize Reed. for the delay. Oh, no problem. Our next item <clears throat> is a City Council item 3A, that's ID 14485. That's a resolution establishing the Council Public Records Act policy. That's Councilman Baines. And uh, just prior to before he kicks us off, he's going to introduce us to some friends that are here um, in Council today. Yeah, thanks, Council President. I just, I just wanted to give a special hello to our uh, friends from Kepler School. I think we have the eighth grade class today. Uh, and hello, you guys are, listen, I hope we're not boring you to death today. Uh, but I understand you have a great tour. Ty's, Ty's taking them on the tour, right? Yeah, so you, you are in great hands. The, one of the best tour guides in the entire city <laughs> is Ty. So we are so glad to have you here today. And I think the, the teachers we have, uh, Jessica Mass and Nicole Gray, right? Okay, well, is this your government class? Oh, wow, wow, all right. So you get a chance to see government in action today. Well, listen, if, if no one's ever told you guys, all politics is local. So you are at the right place today. All right. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Thank you. Good morning, Council President. Gregory Barfield, Chief of Staff to Council Member Oliver Baines, here to present this, uh, 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 this item. This item would, uh, uh, the attached resolution uh, would make Administrative Order AO uh, 8.4, the Public Records Act Policy and Procedures, applicable to all city departments and officials. This AO is intended to streamline and standardize the process of responding to many of the Public Records Act requests that are routinely received by each of us. Uh, this administrative order does not apply to routine requests uh, for police and fire records, which will continue to be handled internally by those departments. The administrative order was heard by the Labor Management Task Force on September 16th, signed into effect by the city manager uh, thereafter. Uh, and again, um, it provides for a more coordinated system uh, uh, under the uh, auspices of Mr. Michael Vasquez, who's a paralegal in the city attorney's office, we now all have a resource to go to. Uh, we ask that you uh, would consider a, a favorable uh, motion uh, and approval of this item. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you, Greg. I'm going to go out to the public and ask if there's any members of the public that would like to uh, comment or ask a question about this item. Now's a good time. All right, then, seeing none, back up here at uh, Council. Uh, the screen is clear. Do I have any Council members? Councilman Baines, would you like to? So move. So, <laughs> and we have a second by Councilman Zhang. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? That passes 7-0. Congratulations, Councilman Council. Council, uh, if you'd like to have a uh, face with the name, this is Michael Vasquez in the front row here. He would be oh. handling these. <laughs> Thanks, Michael. <laughs> Thank you, Greg. All right, at this time I'm going to ask for any unscheduled communication. Any members of the public that would like to address anything before council? Now would be a great time. All right then. Uh, I believe our next item is a 10, PM, 10 a.m. item. Is that correct? We don't have anything between now and then. That's correct. I looked. I don't think there's anything we can fit in between. Okay. The, the rest of today's items are all scheduled, I think, and they, they begin at 10. So we can't move anything forward. So we are going to have to take a break and return at 10 a.m. Uh, with our scheduled items. So thank you for joining us today and enjoy the rest of your tour. We're going to take a break for about 45 minutes. Thank you, everyone.
just I'm the voice of Kepler, so whatever. It's like I have to talk in public, or if we have any events going on, I'll be the one to speak up. And this is Brittany. like right now, right? This yeah. is an event, and you're 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 talking to the public. That's great. That's great. What did you do to What did you do to 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 win your campaign? How hard did you have the campaign? Um, I had to give a speech. And that's as hard as for me as it gets, probably. I don't like speaking. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll have you know that when I was first running for office, when I had the campaign, I would get so nervous about speaking that my palms would sweat, right? They would get real bad and sweat. I would have to close my hands and put them in my pocket. I was all nervous to speak all the time. So I think a lot of public officials, when we first start running for office, we are all nervous just like you. And I was a lot older than you when I ran, and I was still nervous. I would sweat all in my head. I had to get therapy to make sure that, that I could speak. So good job. Good job overcoming that. It's not easy to do. It's not easy to do. Madam Vice President, step to the mic as well. I'm Brittany Chapman. I'm Vice President. Um, I do basically what Maya does when she's not there. If she's not there, I do what she does, or if she's if she's there, I um I go to classes with her and like do speeches like if we're for like parties or something, anything we need. Yeah. Well, that's outstanding. Well, that's what I do for him. See, he's the he's, he's you see the title down there. He says council president, and I have acting president. That's like vice president. So if he's not at a meeting or he can't be there, I have to do that very same thing for him. So see, you guys are a lot like us more than you know. Believe it or not. Well, thank you guys for coming down. Do you guys want to tell us a little bit about your school or anything? Um. <laughs> tell, us, tell us where Kepler is and then tell us how many students are there and all that kind of Kepler stuff. Kepler is downtown. We, we have like around how many? 200. Like 200? 250. So close to 50. Yeah. Like we have like close to 250 and it's pretty small. It's not... Yeah, we're in a church basically, sort of. So it's like a church and there's us. So, mm -hmm. yeah. We're a service learning school, so Good. this is part of it. Community learning, you know. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, I have a question have for a question you, too. too. Oh, go ahead, Sal. Yeah. When you were giving your speeches and running for office, what did you promise the students you would do to get their vote? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> and, and have you and have you and have you done that already? I didn't promise. I didn't promise them anything. I said what I could try to do, but if so, they have to like want a... it just as much as I do, or else if we don't behave or we don't want it, or if we don't give reasons why we should we deserve it, our administrators are not going to give it to us. So we work together. Very good. That's the right Kelsey, answer. you picked up the last part, the administrator or administration. Uh, <laughs> I'll we'll give it to, to you. <laughs> That's funny. Sometimes we found that it pays to go the opposite way of the <laughs> So, great. And Councilman um, Olivia, you well, have I was going to say, what's a service-oriented school? What does that mean? Yeah, but use the microphone. Oh, you want me to do it? No, use the microphone so everyone can hear you. Or whoever answers it. We um, help out with the community. Like, we go out and last year we went to a garden and we helped with the garden. Like, we helped plant and what was it? We helped, we basically helped clean up the garden a little bit. Just, yeah. We clean up the garden. We just helped out. Try to get back. What Hello. kinds of things do you all want to do when you graduate from high school? Like, what, what kind of careers are you talking about? Anybody, yell it out. Firefighter. Firefighter. Marine. Hoorah. <laughs> <Ura. laughs> what else? What about you guys, president, vice president? I want to be a lawyer. Oh, a lawyer. Okay. Oh, right here. He's right, a right he's there. a lawyer. He's a lawyer. What do you want to do? I'm not sure yet. Okay. And there's nothing wrong with that, by yeah, the way. It'll change. You guys will all 
you have to figure out what you want to do. All right. Well, so good luck. Kepler, Kepler is a middle school, right? Um, elementary, and elementary and middle K through eight. Oh, K through eighth. So you guys are at the top of the pecking order there because you guys are the eighth graders, right? Yeah. Leaders. Okay. Yeah. 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 We understand. We understand. Well, hey, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Come back. Thank anytime. you, guys. Thanks, everybody. Thank Perfect. All right, I think we're going to get back on track with our 10 o'clock items. Our first 10 o'clock item is a hearing to adopt a resolution ordering the vacation of portions of northwest side of Stanislaus Street, uh, northeast of Fulton Street, and that's from our Public Works Department. Andrew, good to see you back again. Good morning again, <laughs> Council President Brandau. Andrew Benelli with Public Works Department. Uh, this is a public hearing to consider some vacation of some right-of-way. Uh, this right of way, this request has been made by Granville Homes. They are working on a, a, a multifamily project in the area of the Metropolitan Museum. Uh, it's surrounded by Stanislaus, Fulton, Van Ness, and Calaveras. Primarily, they are asking for uh, four feet of vacation of the right of way along the sidewalk area, sort of the back of the right of way or the, that portion of the right of way next to the uh, private property. They're also asking that we vacate a a section of the alley, not all of the alley, uh, but that part of the alley that goes through their project. And the alley, there will be an easement uh, reserved for utilities in that alley. And I, that concludes my report. I'd be glad to answer any questions. We also have a representative here from Granville Homes who's made this request. Hey, cool. We will go out to the public then and then come back up to council. So, all right. Good morning, Council President, Council Members. I'm Claudia Cazares with Granville Homes. Very appreciative of city staff's recommendation of this item. The Med is one of our uh, signature items downtown, and we're really happy to get it going in the next week or so, the next couple of weeks, hopefully start construction in November. And uh, you've seen it's been graded already. You've had a chance to pass by there. But again, just very supportive and thankful of Public Works staff on their recommendation for this item. Well, thanks, Claudia. Any other members of the public like to address this item? Then up here before council then. Um, the screen is clear. Do I have a motion? I have a motion and do I have a second? I'll second that. So we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion passes 7-0. Thank you, Andrew. Thanks, Claudia. Let's see. We, now we are on to the 10 a.m. item number two. A hearing pertaining to the establishment of a non-exclusive towing operation franchise for, suit, for certain towing operations in participation with the police department. And so that is being presented, presented to us by our police department, correct? I'm sorry, sir, I didn't hear you. Are you guys presenting this to uh, us today? Yes, it was open for public discussion. I can start if you'd like. Yeah, please. Okay. Thank you and good morning to all of you. 
Uh, we're here for the adoption of the uh, non-exclusive franchise tow agreement, a three-year three agreement, and asking council uh, to give the chief of police the authority to enter into that three-year contract um, with our tow operators. We're also asking council today for the adoption uh, to adopt the amendments to Article 17, Chapter 9 of the Fresno Municipal Code uh, as it relates to tow trucks. Okay. All right. Um, so we'll go out to the public okay. and then come back up to council and we might have some questions for you. All right, thank you. Sir. So let me go first out to the public. Are there any members of the public that would like to address this item? If not, back up here at council. Council members? Questions or comments? All right then. The screen is clear. Do I have a motion to approve? I'll make that motion to approve. Do we have a second? We have a second. Councilman Olivier. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion passes 7-0. We made it easy on you. That was it. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. <clears throat> well, those two items took place so fast that now we actually have another 15-minute break. Our next, we have, two, we have a 10-30 item and an 11 a.m. item. Um, Madam Clerk, the 10-30 item, the one that we're hearing, number two, how long will that take? In I your opinion? don't have a good feel for that one. Um, maybe staff's here. They can share. I'm not sure they are. So we're not too sure? No. All right, because what I don't want to do is just come back and have another short little and then have a, nut, a third break. So let's just come back at uh, 1045 and hear the 1030 timed item. All right. Thank you. We'll be back at 1045. No. You All right. Our 1030 um, item number two, a hearing to uh, consider rezone application R14006 and related environmental finding. And that is from our DARM, de our department. Good morning, Council President Brandow, members of the Council. My name is Sandra Brock, and the item before you is Environmental Assessment R14006, accompanying rezone application R14006. <clears throat> this is uh, not a rezone that changes the zone district. It will remain zoned for light industrial use. It will retain the boulevard area setback the urban growth management designation, and it will still have conditions of zoning. What this rezone application does is for two parcels, which were originally conditioned in 2001, it modifies the conditions of zoning. I'm the first person using the new PowerPoint remote. Bear with me. Yes. Hi. The entire northeastern quadrant of this intersection of Bullard and Fig Garden was part of a plan amendment and rezone in 2001. And subsequently, there were parcels divided and uses developed. The two parcels outlined by the red line uh, in this diagram have been developed by a 2006 conditional use permit. And as you can see, there's one rather long building in the back. Actually, it's, it's two two buildings, there's a little space there, and then a, a kind of a corner pad up at the northeast. Um, to the south is commercial, across the street is commercial, and then to the northeast is the city park and ponding basin, the baseball park in Fig Garden Loop. <clears throat> south of this property along Bullard Avenue is a church. When the property that was zoned CP was uh, conditioned, it was conditioned to develop as a church, and it has. These are the plan designations surrounding the property. The property is designated light industrial, and so retaining the M1 zoning is consistent with the plan. And in 2001, this was the ordinance bill that took the large, approximately 40-acre area and applied conditions of zoning to a lot of property in the area. Now, the M run district is sort of the uh, equivalent, uh, can be equivalent of a business park type. 
And in fact, this property was required to develop with the M1P, the Light Industrial Business Park standards, although it's got M1 zoning. There are many commercial uses allowed in M1, and the code allows the director to consider applications for other commercial uses on a case-by-case -case basis, with um, the, the tests being that the uses would be incidental to, directly related to, and serving the permitted industrial uses. Since much of this property is developed, and the surrounding area M1 is developed and occupied, uh, rather than have the applicant come back each time and say, can we do this and wait for an answer? Can we do that and wait for an answer? They requested a couple of things. They needed the conditions of zoning change to allow some types of schools which would not be noise sensitive. As you can see, the Burlington Northern tracks run along the edge of the property. <clears throat> so schools were prohibited on all the property. Well, some types of schools are not noise sensitive. Vocational schools, dance, martial arts, those types of things. Uh, the train noise outside the building wouldn't matter. The other thing that's happened since 2001 is the new energy efficiency codes and insulation standards for buildings have uh, increased to the point where you get a huge amount of acoustical treatment just through the building code. The applicant met with the Council District 2 Committee and discussed the, the proposed uses and the proposed changes at length. And on July 14th, they officially took a formal vote to adopt it. Um, the one requested use that the committee didn't want was a liquor store. And that was in line with the staff's recommendation. And that was consistent with what the Planning Commission's resolution says. Yes, we're good with all the uses. We're good with changing the conditions of zoning. We just don't want liquor store. And the applicant has agreed to that also. And so the uh, recommendation for this body, for the council, is the same as it was at the Planning Commission. Staff recommends adoption of the mitigated negative declaration as the environmental finding and um, adoption of the rezone application or approval of the rezone application to change the conditions of zoning to the property. Subsequent to that, should it be approved by the council, a new covenant would be recorded on the property. So it would provide a affirmative notice to any future buyers or tenants that these are the ground rules for commercial uses at the site. If you have any questions. Thanks, Sandra. What I'll do is I'll go out to the public first and then come back up to council. So are there any members of the public? All right, Dirk. Good morning. Good morning, council president. I'm Dirk Pushel and my business address is 923 Van Ness here in Fresno. Uh, Sandy's done a very comprehensive job of identifying the issues. Um, this particular property was in bankruptcy. It sat there for many years. And as we looked at the property and evaluated it, it appeared that while it's zoned industrial, it, its location uh, was probably more some form of a blend. And to avoid a plan amendment, uh, we worked with Jennifer and Mike Sanchez and Sandy and we came up with uh, an idea to add these additional uses, which makes the site really much more competitive. And you'll, I think you're going to hear this morning from one of the tenants that wants to bring a dance uh, school into the facility, and this will facilitate that use. Uh, Planning Commission heard this. There was no opposition. They unanimously supported it, as did uh, the advisory committee. So we thank staff for their work, and uh, we ask that you support the application as proposed by staff. Thank you, Dirk. Thank you so much. All right. Are there any other members of the public that would like to address this item? Uh, my daughters are the directors of the STARS Dance Studio. And a few months ago, we signed a lease to move into this facility. We did not know that uh, the zoning was not correct for us. So we're being moved by the high-speed rail. We're currently on Golden State Avenue. And the trains are right across the street from us now, so that has not been a problem. Thank you. What was your name, sir? Uh, my name is Jeff Sharnick. Jim, right Jeff. on. Thank you. Okay. Any other members of the public like to address this item? All right, then. We'll bring it back up to council, and since it's right in my district, I'll get us started. Um, I, I don't have a lot to ask, except I did get a couple of um, emails about the liquor store situation. And so I just wanted to 
state it again on the record, although I heard you say it, Sandra, and, you, and for sure there's agreement that liquor stores are not one of the items that could be included in the future. Is that correct? This changes conditions of zoning to allow by right uses under the M1 district and the liquor store can never be done by right. It takes a conditional use permit under other portions of our code. So we have not included liquor stores in the list of commercial uses that would be allowed. Someday in the future, somebody might uh, try another rezone application, but for this application before you today, liquor stores are not included as one of the permitted commercial uses. Fantastic, thank you, Sandra. And I, and I had heard you say that, I just wanted to make sure that uh, the, the few people that had emailed me we're very clear on that. So, well, with that, I'm going to um, recommend approval of this staff recommendation. And so I'm going to make the motion to approve. So, and, okay. And no other council members have punched up. So let's take a vote. Um, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion passes 7 0. Thanks, Sandra. Thank you, Dirk and Jim as well. Our 11, 11 a.m. timed item, ID 14-422, is a continued hearing to consider a resolution of public use and necessity for acquisition of a permanent utility easement. Yes. Morning, Council President, City Council, Brock Buki, Supervising Professional Engineer, Public Utilities and Water Division. Uh, this hearing is uh, for Council's consideration to adopt a resolution of necessity, which would allow us to acquire the necessary permanent and construction easements associated to the Fryant Kern Canal Pipeline Project. Okay, so the, just a brief description of the project. Uh, this will be, when completed, a 5.6-mile pipeline that will connect the Northeast Surface and Water Treatment Plant to the Fry and Kern Canal. The objectives of this project is to improve delivery reliability of water. Presently, it's served off of a canal, and there are limitations when water can be delivered to the facility. Uh, the pipeline would allow us to get year-round uh, delivery. Uh, the pipeline will also improve water quality coming to the plant by uh, eliminating uh, nearly 47 miles of open canal conveyance. So it'll be in a pipeline and well protected. Uh, this, uh, well, it'll prevent uh, contamination uh, from debris running into uh, the conveyance system and from malicious acts. Uh, porta potties and other things have fallen into canal, so this will protect that water quality. Uh, additionally, uh, once the pipeline is in place, we'll be able to optimize uh, the running of the facility. Uh, we'll have year round full capacity coming to the plant, and we'll be able to take full advantage of what it's uh, capable of producing. And this is also in conjunction with the recent completion of the Chestnut Pipeline which brings water from the Northeast plant all the way down to Ashland Avenue and is pushing out to the uh, southern portions of the city. Uh, with the pipeline construction, uh, we'll be able to reduce operational costs. Right now we use uh, three to four large pumps that pull the water off the channel to push it into uh, the treatment facility. There'll be enough elevation difference between the Frank Kern Canal and this plant that we won't need those pumps and then we'll reduce our operational costs. Um, and also, there's sufficient elevation difference uh, between the canal and the plant 
uh, that we're making provisions that we can drop in a hydropower generation unit in the future. Uh, the improved water quality means we'll be using less chemicals, which further reduces the operational cost. Uh, by optimizing the use of this facility, we'll start, you know, incrementally improving uh, our ability to use more surface water and reducing our reliance on groundwater, which is in a state of overdraft. And with completion of the project, the Friant Kern Canal pipeline will be the primary feed to the facility, but will maintain the Enterprise Canal as our backup for delivery of water. Um, in 2006 to 2007, uh, we entered into an agreement with Clovis Unified uh, School District and uh, the State Center Community College to construct that one mile of pipeline while those campuses were being built. So that's in place. Uh, this project will then complete uh, the remaining 4.6 miles. Um, we have brought the CEQA document to council, which uh, was adopted by council in June of 2012. We're working on finalizing the NEPA component which is under control of the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation and very near uh, having that wrapped up. Uh, highlighted in green is securing uh, the pipeline right-of-way easements. That's where we are right now. Uh, once we have uh, those easements secured, we'll complete the design and then be going out to bid, hopefully uh, in early 2016 for the construction of this facility. Um, Throughout uh, the entire project, we have been very proactive uh, reaching out to the various landowners along the pipeline easement. Predominantly, all have been very favorable to the project, uh, which has been really great. Um, and at this point, um, this map here kind of gives an overall uh, you know, bird's eye view of what this project is. Uh, at the far side, up in the north uh, portion of that, the northeast, is our connection to the Friant Kern Canal, and then it works its way west and south uh, to the red blob, which is the northeast plant. Uh, the parcels highlighted in yellow are the ones that are being covered with this uh, resolution of necessity. Uh, we, since starting this and putting it on the agenda, have reached agreement with a, a couple of landowners. Uh, another is to uh, sign off uh, later this afternoon. Uh, however, there are still some that have been non-responsive uh, to offers to purchase. So the, the proposed action considers uh, that this is uh, in the interest of the, the public to finish this project. Uh, the project is planned in a matter that will be most compatible with the greatest public good and the least private injury. The property is necessary for the proposed project. An offer to purchase the required utility easement has been made pursuant to section 7267.2 of the government code. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, CICOA and NEPA have CEQA is complete, NEPA is nearly complete. And so staff recommends that City Council adopt a resolution which states that the public use and necessity require the permanent utility easements and temporary construction easements and authorize eminent domain action as provided by California Code of Civil Procedure. And here, Brock? It. Yeah. All right. Brock, we'll go out to uh, the public first and then come back up to council. Are there any members of the public that would like to address this item? All right, back up here at council, Councilman Brand. Thank you for the presentation, Brock. Um, I know we talked about this you know, before and this basically uh, replaces what, the Enterprise Canal, is that the connecting point now? That's correct. Okay, so this is, goes, from the northeast plant on International straight to the Frank Kern Canal, correct? Yes. Okay. And so by doing that, you're always, it's an underground 60-inch water main. So you have, you mentioned earlier, the water quality is better. You're not having animals fall in there, even sabotage. Um, 
I remember talking to Tommy too that by having the um, the water come directly underground, it should reduce the downtime on the northeast plant because there's no maintenance. We normally have to maintain the canal. Is that correct? Yeah, typically FID will take their canal system down in November mm -hmm. and do maintenance through uh, February. And having this pipeline in place will allow us to run the plant year-round uh, and not have that uh, otherwise disruption. So currently it's down four to six weeks, and during that time the water's got to be pumped, so you've got the cost of pumping the water out, right, versus having the uh, northeast plant idle during that time? That's true, yes. Okay. And less chemicals, energy savings, because you're not pumping the water up. So um, really, it should, it should increase the capacity roughly 10%? Uh, it, it, more than that. Okay. Um, we're, we would expect, because as FID brings our system online, mm -hmm. we don't bring the plant up to full capacity until May or June. Um, so there's a ramp-up period. By having this pipeline in place, we should be able to improve the operation of the plant by nearly a third. Well, that's significant. And so that converts to so many million, million gallons per day times so many days yeah, online, Yeah, typically right? on an average uh, annual basis, we've been doing about 20,000 acre feet mm -hmm. annually. With this pipeline in place, we'll be able to ramp up to 30,000 acre feet annually. Okay. So that's really that the plant's true capacity, 30,000 acre feet. We've been roughly around 20 to 22,000 acre feet uh, historically. Yeah, it, it's capable of 30,000 acre right. feet when, um, when this pipeline is complete. So over time then, there's an initial cost to do this, but over time, this will actually save money. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Thank you. I make a motion that we approve this item. And a second by Councilman Baines. Councilman Olivier. I just had a quick question. What, you talk about reaching out to the, the property owners. Can you describe for me what that entails? When we initiated this project, uh, we went through uh, an evaluation of different alignments uh, to figure out which was going to be the best. And uh, along the process uh, of doing that, we went and talked to each of the landowners uh, where we I'm so, excuse me for interrupting, but you were able to t physically actually speak in is it in person or, or via telephone with each of the landowners? It has been both of those all okay. along. In the beginning, we, t today it will be um, well. Today would be kind of a, a blanket um, covering all of those that are mentioned in the council report. Okay. However, we would not take uh, this to a complaint level with those that have signed. It would just be those that were unable to get uh, a response from. And that's uh, essentially uh, the segment on the south side of Foothill Lane, which is on private mm -hmm. property. Uh, they also, this party is a, a part interest owner in Foothill Lane. And then they too have uh, an easement that's on the east side of Albury Road. Mm -hmm. it, it seems to me, um, well, I'm interested in finding out what what you mean by we've been unable to, to get a response? Uh, because if you've actually knocked on their door and had uh, amicable conversations with them, I mean, what happened? They dropped off the face of the earth, or, or w where's the breakdown occurring? Um, just the, the breakdown is, is um, they're not following through, responding to our inquiries. How can we help you understand this? We've had a number of one-on-one -on -one meetings with them discussing the project. And, you know, it... So it hasn't it, been... It, that you, just you haven't just mailed point. out a postcard. You've actually had a number of meetings absolutely. in person, face-to-face. -face. Absolutely. Okay. We have spent a number of times meeting with them one-on-one, -on -one, follow-up conversations, uh, mailings, you know, everything we could do to mm -hmm. reach out and, uh, you know, ha help them understand the project and answer any questions they may have. Um, and, and I'm not asking you to, uh, unless it's unless you're okay with uh, supposing what their problem is, but or, or for city manager as well, uh, what do you suppose the problem is with, with these unresponsive uh, landowners? In probably 2008, land values had really skyrocketed. They were inflated, uh, and they had, you know, an evaluation done on what their property was worth at that point. Since the decline of the real estate market, 
uh, those values are no longer legitimate. And when we had our appraiser go out there, at MAI, you know, he's looking at today's comps and they're reluctant to, to you know, accept that decline in the value of their property. Okay. Um, would, it, would it be within the realm of possibility if this body were to ask you to, to try again? Um, how would that affect this project? If, it would, if, if we voted today to, to ask staff to, to go and reach out again, to perhaps uh, do some in-person visits, how, how would it affect uh, the outcome uh, of this the, project? The, the, you know, what we're trying to do, it's going to be a timeline impact. It, it starts impacting getting the project complete. Um, we sent out notices to these people in March, uh, and here we are in October. Um, I, would, we, would we, you we've, we've tried everything, Councilman, and I'm not sure a, another visit is going to sway them one way or another. That was my next question. You don't think that perhaps if you were to go out again, knock on their door and ask. Is, is there a way that you could... Um, route this project around these areas so as not to, is, is that also within the realm of possibility or? Uh, not without significant changes to environmental documents and uh, the regulatory agencies, that would be a significant setback in the, the project schedule. Okay, um, thank you. Sure. I appreciate it. Um, council colleagues, I, um, I guess City Attorney Sloan, my question would be, at this point, I would I would be interested in introducing a, a competing uh, motion uh, to to instruct staff to try again uh, with these uh, home or property owners who are, are reluctant to to participate further in the process. Has there been a motion made yet? There has been a motion in second. You could make a motion to amend that motion, or wait and see if that motion passes first. Those okay. or ask for a friendly amendment. Okay. I guess then, then that's what I'll do. Uh, Council Member Brand, I'm, uh, I can explain to you where I'm coming from, and then I'm going to ask you for a friendly amendment. Um, I, I don't, um, you know, as, as you may know, I, I have an aversion to, to eminent domain, or as, as they call it uh, in, in, in the United Kingdom, which is uh, compulsory purchase. I, I think that the, the founders made a mistake when they included eminent domain in, in the Constitution. Uh, I think that it's our duty as, as an elected body, as, as Americans, to offer uh, these property owners another opportunity uh, to sell this property without us having to exercise uh, eminent domain. And so what I would ask is, um, I would ask on behalf of those property owners, uh, I would ask for us to give them another chance. I would ask that uh, Councilmember Brand, you amend your motion to have staff go out and try to contact them uh, another time uh, and then come and report back to the City Council on, on what their response would be. I think that if we tried a little bit harder, perhaps uh, perhaps we could get some kind of an outcome that, that wouldn't involve us having to take people's private property. Staff? Do you have something to add? I, I do. Um, even if the resolution of necessity is adopted, we still have an opportunity to work with the landowner uh, prior to you know taking it to the the legal action. So, but with the resolution of necessity, are you are we going to be more passive and wait for them to reach out to us, or or does this resolution of necessity include staff actually going out to to try again? We can certainly continue reaching out to them after adoption of the resolution of necessity and would, you know, uh, make the, the promise to you that we'll do that. Okay. I appreciate that very much. And I'm, I'm interested in, in, in seeing this worked out without having uh, to exercise eminent domain. Uh, I, would, I would just ask that perhaps we wait on the resolution of necessity and... Um, uh, until staff can can come back and definitively report that these property owners are either unresponsive or, or unwilling to to sell their property. I mean, if not, we vote and I lose and we move on. <laughs> uh, what am I asking for? What's that? Please. I suspicion that. I mean, we had this deal a year ago, as I recall, on the uh, the widening of knees and and willow that you'll, you'll sometimes get property owners who just simply um, have expectations that are probably, you know, unrealistic in terms of what market value is. And 
you know, the, 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 the eminent domain has got to be something that's judiciously used and it's done when you've exhausted all, all other uh, avenues. But, you know, if we're not taking out prime land, like some of the examples people have used across the country, like we're not taking residential property out to put a casino in, we're not going to put a sports stadium and ruin a neighborhood. This is something that's essential and vital. This is infrastructure to the city of Fresno. And I know this has been going on probably way too long. So there's a cost to everything. Um, and I, I am all for asking, you know, every, I'm sure I'm okay with them as going forward, meeting with property owners. I'm sure that's going to be in the process. You're going to meet with these people. You're going to talk. They're going to offer. You're going to counteroffer. So this thing today doesn't finalize those negotiations. And ultimately, if it did end up in an eminent domain, it would still have to come back to this body, correct? So if we vote today and there's some property owner who has a, a just cause or he can make his, his case compelling that we're not given enough money, then we have that right to come back here and we can make that judgment then. So the resolution just moves the process forward, correct? That's correct. Okay, so I'm okay with that. I, and I, I respect Mr. Olivia. I expect you can, I have the same concerns, but I think... Ultimately, you know, what's, what's in the public good? And I believe this is ultimately in the public good. The actual details on purchasing any parcels will be, you know, out there and will come back to us just like it, we did on the one on, on Willow and Knees. And, the, and that one, as I recall, I thought the city had actually overpaid for the property. But I thought we went out of our way to be accommodated. And I don't think it's the case here, and correct me if I'm wrong, where somebody says, this is my family farm, you're taking my house out, I don't want to move. This is a case where you're asking for an easement on a portion of the property, correct? That's correct, and all the easements are along property lines, so it minimizes any impacts uh, to their, their property. Yeah, so in other words, in, with the RDA and stuff I've done in my six years here and six years on the Planning Commission, we've actually had cases where you're taking away people that are living there. This is totally different in terms of what we're doing here. So. I would like just to continue the, the motion now. And again, we have an opportunity to come back and ultimately decide if it comes down to an impasse in the negotiations. So, no, no thank you. <laughs> a friendly no. <clears throat> Screen's clear, Brock. I have a couple of questions. So I kind of want to clarify. Uh, I want to hear it um, clarified for, for myself. Are there any of the properties that are along the easement that we need where this is a complete disruption of their lifestyle and they've got to move or they've got to give up their property for this project? Or is it more about an easement that we're going to put a pipe underground eventually then? Is that correct? Or Yeah, we're not causing anybody to have to level a house or to move. There'll be a little bit of temporary disruption in a few of them where they have horses um, so we'll have to move them away from that while the pipeline is constructed. But once it's complete, they have full use of their property again, okay. you know, for that kind of use. Um, it's, you know, in the kind of the northeast area, it runs parallel to an existing irrigation line, the Garfield Irrigation mm -hmm. District line. Uh, so it's similar in use in that. Um, and, you know, we've done everything we can to minimize the impacts to these owners. Okay. And, and, and to clarify which you just mentioned, um, once the pipeline's in, within weeks or months after the pipeline's been installed, the ground's back on top of the pipeline, they could plant a crop or they could um, hold uh, livestock or anything. They can go back to the regular use. Or is that land restricted from them? No, uh, we're uh, actually along Willow at Copper. Uh, it's presently planted in vines. And the expectation is once that pipeline's dropped in, they can go back and plant the, the grapevines there as well. Uh, the rest of it is in range land, uh, but in a, a couple of areas where it runs through a couple of large residential uh, parcels, they can certainly plant, uh, you know, plants, uh, you know, bushes, shrubs, whatever they had there before. As long as it's just not a, a large permanent structure that would hinder our ability to go in in the future to repair and maintain the pipeline if, when it's required. All right. Well, I, I do share some of Councilman Olivier's concerns um, about eminent domain projects that the city engages in for sure, and I always want to make sure that, that we're doing right by our citizens, but certainly Councilman Olivier, I, I believe that this probably falls into 
a very fair and valid use of, uh, of this easement rights, um, supplying the city of Fresno with, with good drinking water. So, so I'm going to be supportive of this resolution today. And now we have Councilman Olivier. You're back. You're done. Okay. Okay. We have a motion from Councilman Brand, and I think it was seconded by Councilman Baines to um, adopt this resolution as presented today. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? No. Motion passes 6-1 with Councilman Olivier voting no. All right. Let's see. Um, is it... Um, Close session. Oh, hold on a second. I was going to ask. Connected to this, can we give direct? Can we give direction to staff at this time? You may. From our side, the citizens. So sure. I would like to. I would. Yeah, guys. I would like to give direction to staff to, um, for us to not passively wait, but just to try and continue to engage uh, these citizens throughout the process. Yeah, and I can tell you that, and I'm sorry if I didn't pick up, but we do have some tentative agreements already with some of these folks. So. We believe that maybe even as early as today we may have documents. So we will we will again reach out and I've told Brock and Tommy even we'll pick up the cup of coffee and go spend some time with some folks and just sit down and see if we can work it out. We'll continue to do that. All right, perfect. Thank you. All right, now we are done with our uh, public portion of our meeting. We today's meeting in memory of Earl Smith Camp, a great pioneer in our community.